So let's look at some simple ways that we can use CSS to change our generic looking resume into something that looks a little bit nicer. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to modify our H1 tag here. So with my mouse cursor inside of my name, I'm going to come over here to my right hand side, choose new CSS rule, and I'm going to choose tag. And you'll notice that because my mouse cursor was inside of the name, which is an H1 tag, when I came here to my selector type and chose tag, it automatically chose the H1 tag for me. I'm going to say OK. When we say OK, a new window comes up that's going to allow us to modify our CSS styles for our H1 tag. This is going to apply for all H1 tags. I might do something simple, I choose the font family and say, you know what, instead of the default, which is like a Times New Roman, I could go with a similar type, like Georgia. If I click Apply, I can see the change over here. Or I might choose something completely different, such as Arial Black. Choose Apply, and you notice how I have a completely different looking font. Dreamweaver is going to give us several different types, or we could create our own using the Edit Font List option. For now, I'm going to choose something like Tahoma, and make sure my font weight is listed as bold. And I'm going to make it a little bit larger than the default size. I'm going to choose 32 pixels. Hit apply. You notice that my changes have already occurred. My 32 pixels still may not be quite enough. I might choose like 48 pixels. Apply. And now I'm a lot larger. Right now I'm on my type category and this is all my information allows me to adjust with type. I can choose things like my color, if I want some text decoration such as overline or underlining. My font style will let me choose if I want it italicized or not. I can also come over here to my block category. And this allows me to display how my block of text is going to look. So for example, I might choose text align and say center. Apply. Now I have to move my window so you can see my text. So now I can see my name. You know, it says centered on my screen. Next thing I might want to do is I notice I have a lot of room between my name and my address. So I'm going to come over here under box, margins listed here, uncheck same for all, on bottom choose zero, click apply. You might notice that not much has changed. This is because not only do I have a margin applied, but I also have a margin for my paragraph. Margin is one of the few things that allow me to type in a negative value. You notice when I type in negative 10, you'll notice that it came up some. I can continue on with different negative values until I find the correct value for what I'm looking for. If I hit the enter key, you notice that my window goes away and all my settings have been saved so far. I might come right here to my H2 tag for my education. Once again, I'm going to say create a new rule using a little plus symbol. Choose tag for my selector type. Say OK. My font family, once again, I'll come over here and choose Tahoma so it looks similar. Enter my box, uncheck same for all and my bottom margin make it negative 15 pixels. Notice this brings it up so that my generic college is now close to my education so those two are grouped together. You may also notice that my Acme Rockets also moved up closer to work experience and this is because the work experience is also an H2 tag and right now we're defining the rules for H2 and it's all my H2 tags not my mouse cursor in which is the education tag. Anytime I'm applying a style to a tag, it's going to affect all my tags on that page that my style is applied to. And that has saved my information as soon as I save my document. And that is just some real basic ways that I can adjust the way a page looks with some simple text CSS. Let's look real quick what I can do with my images. Remember over here my images I had to go in and choose to align left or align right. Unfortunately you may notice also that puts my text up right against the edge of my image. 
which may not be what I want. Now in the old days, what we would do is we would go into our image and give a little bit extra space on the right hand side if we we're going to align our text to the left. Or if we we're going to align our text to the right, we give a little bit extra space on the left hand side. While both of those work, it also creates some other problems for us, such as if we had a texture background, it may not match. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose to go back to my default alignment real quick on both my images. And I'm going to create a new rule. But this rule, I'm going to use as a class. A class is something that's going to start with a period and it can be applied to multiple elements on the same page. So I'm going to choose dot img, short for image, and I'm say left. This is going to allow me to float an image to the left hand side. To do so, I'm going to first click OK, so it creates a rule. I cover here my box category and choose float. Let's say float to the left hand side. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to my margin, uncheck where it says same for all, and since I'm floating to the left hand side of my screen, I want to apply some right margin. I will just choose something small such as 8 pixels. I'm going to click on OK. Now you might notice that nothing has happened. This is because I have not applied this class to my image. If I click on my image, down my property panel, under my class, I have a drop down and it lists all the classes that it knows about right now. I'm going to choose image left. You notice my image comes over my left, my text comes up, and if you notice when I click on my image where the border is, you notice I have about 8 pixels of margin between my image and my text. This is what I want. Let's do the same thing except we're going to do it for a float right. So I'm going to come over here my new CSS selector. Once again I'm choosing a class, so I'm going to start with a dot. This is going to be IMG RT short for right. Say OK. Go to my box category. My float option. I'm going to choose to float right. Uncheck my same for all for margin. And this time, because I want my image on the right hand side, I need my margin on the left. I'm going to choose 8 pixels, say OK. Click on my image I want to float to the right. Notice right now my property panel, there is no classes associated with it. Click on the drop down. Notice image right now appears because it's been created. Click OK. And you'll notice my image is now displaying. And you notice because I have my margin already associated with it, Dreamer is going to do a little bit better job about displaying it in the design view. I'm going to save my document, and now all my information is saved with my classes so that my images display a little bit nicer.